All right, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us today on this webinar, which we are calling Rethinking Voice Communication in a Post-COVID World. I see there's a lot of different people on the call today. Thanks for joining us and taking the time to learn a little bit more about what we're offering. Um, I would like to thank our sponsors to get started. We've got All Works Communications, an award-winning voiceover IP phone system manufacturer, uh, Clearfly Communications, which is a nationwide voice carrier, and Microsoft. I also want to give a big shout out to all of those uh, folks, the men and women who are working right now on the front lines of fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I know that there's a few of you on the call today, um, and I think that I can speak for everybody to say thank you so much um, for keeping us safe. So we're going to get started here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. So starting with just a little bit of housekeeping. My name is Meg Ross. I am a business development executive for First Call Computer Solutions. Um, for those of you that are unfamiliar with First Call, we are a full resource technology company. Uh, we love to strengthen Montana businesses through secure and predictable IT. Uh, we focus on network design, implementation. Uh, we also help with websites uh, and, of course, voice over IP phone systems and other voice communication roles. Um, and like my, like many of you, my job is, has really had to pivot and been affected by the pandemic. Although I typically work uh, remotely 90% of the time, for me, that remote work is face-to-face -face with people or it's at trade shows or um, having meetings. Um, but pivoting is important to do. So one of the things that I've decided to do is wear a different hat by um, creating a webinar series. Um, so that I can continue to help educate uh, the, the community through this line of communication. And since I'm a business development executive, what I have to do is lean on technical experts to bring that information to you. So um, I've got leaders from my organization that I have to lean on, and then we have great vendor partnerships that are experts in their fields that, that we lean on as well. So with us today, um, I have Richard Schumann, the regional channel manager for Allworks, um, who's responsible for the entire Western part of the U US and Canada. Um, Richard has over 25 years of experience in voice over IP technology. He has consulted on voice solutions for various size companies from small independent firms to larger corporations like Nike, uh, Nordstrom, Expedia. Uh, Richard's strong business acumen along with his entrepreneurial instincts have helped multiply companies, multiple companies through rapid and continuous growth. Um, welcome, Richard. Thank you for being thank, here. Thank you. Good morning. And another panelist I have today is none other than Connor Smith, the CEO of First Call. Uh, he's a fourth generation Montana and he has 20 plus years in the high tech sector in Montana and beyond. Um, Connor came on board with First Call in 2001 uh, he was young, exuberant. He shared a vision for adding value to Montana businesses. And, and I believe, uh, working with Connor for a really long time, that uh, his focus on people is paramount in his success. Um, because no business can be successful in, a long, in the long term unless it listens to its customers to understand what they're trying to achieve. Thanks, Connor, for being here. Not feeling as young as I used to, but I still get <laughs> yeah. after people. Yeah, thank you. Um, so finally, I just want to thank Katie Buckley. She's our, our moderator today. She's going to be paying attention to the questions that come in, making sure that we address those. Um, if not throughout the webinar, then certainly at the end. Uh, Katie is a marketing guru for First Call Computer Solutions, and I really appreciate her time. And um, I know she's in the background right now, but uh, thanks, Katie, for being here. So, okay, let's, let's get started here. Uh, we're all going to, uh, about our daily happy little world. And then, um, and through that process, we're largely using the tools that we've always used. And then suddenly COVID hits and everybody had to scramble, um, last minute planning. Some things are probably working for some of you and, and for some of the others, they probably aren't. Um, and there are adjustments that have to be made. So, this webinar is about learning from that experience and helping you to think about how you can get back to the normal and ultimately perform better 
um, in the future. I like to, to call it seeking out better ways. So Connor, with that in mind, um, can you talk us through these key points around voice communication? Um, let's start with pre-COVID. Yeah, so Meg, as you mentioned, uh, we're all kind of sitting around minding our own business, business as usual. Um, and in terms of the, the voice systems, you know, desk phones were largely at the office. Um, mobile phones, they were in our pockets. Um, remote workers, pretty insignificant for most organizations in terms of as a percentage of your workforce, um, you know, how they were situated, how they were configured, how they were connected. Um, you know, in terms of companies that had field workforce, it really just depends on the industry. Um, and again, how you had those, you know, folks connected and, you know, if they were in the field, was it more cell phone use? Was it more face-to-face -face communication? And then, you know, we all have emails, we all have voicemails, we all have contacts, personal contacts, business contacts. Um, and for many of us, that stuff is kind of spread um, all over the place. Um, so that's kind of the, the position things were in uh, before COVID hit. And so now what, what do you see happening with COVID? So uh, like you said, you know, kind of a, a mad scramble, um, running and gunning uh, to get people home um, out of the offices, uh, but still reasonably connected, uh, you know, to uh, data, you know, voice communications, et cetera. So for most folks, uh, the desk phone is probably still at the office. Um, right. your, your personal mobile phone, uh, you're relying on heavily uh, for work now uh, versus just personal reasons. Uh, the call flow uh, kind of disrupted at best. Um, you know, uh, people that are calling the office, uh, you know, how are they getting to you? You're handing out the cell phone number. Um, you know, if you need to transfer a call to somebody else, um, it, it's just, uh, you know, kind of a garbled mess. Um, mm -hmm. Phone lines, um, you know, you got all the stuff you were paying for, and then potentially you've got employees coming to you saying, hey, I've got all these minutes on my personal phone. Uh, how do I get reimbursed for that? So those costs are going up. And then your emails, voicemails, um, you know, are even more spread out and you're trying to organize all that, you know, from your home office or wherever it is that you're working. So we we're, we had one thing going on before COVID and everybody's going along their, their way. There's a scramble, there's a lot more confusion. Um, what does the post COVID environment look like in terms of voice communication from your perspective, Connor? Well, the one key point that I would like to make is that, you know, whether you're remote or you're in the office, ultimately work is still work. Um, and if your tools are set up the same way um, as when you're at home, um, you know, the phone's in your pocket or you're in the office, uh, all of that, those issues that we talked about previously suddenly go away. Um, so you've got to get your technology uh, lined up to where you can work flexibly and your voice uh, it flexes with based off of the work that you're doing, where you're doing it. Um, in terms of desk phones, um, you know, most of our mentality is, you know, I have a desk phone, uh, but not everybody needs a desk phone anymore. Um, you can use your PC as a desk phone uh, with a nice headset. Um, you can use your mobile phone as as your desk phone uh, with an app. So you really want to get to the point where you do have desk phones where you need them, but not where you don't. Um, and mobile phones, um, uh, sorry, call flow, once you get to that place, um, you know, will be the same regardless of where it is that you're working. Um, right. And you can drive down the costs of phone lines and using your minutes and uh, all of those different types of things to actually drive some operational uh, real dollar savings. Mm -hmm. And then just like we've kind of gotten with our mobile phones where all of our contacts are on that device, um, you can get there as well to where your business contacts, your personal contacts, um, everything is right there where you need it and you're not having to, to jump around to, to different things. And then lastly, uh, again, nobody wants to be checking voicemails on their cell phone, on their work phone, um, you know, who knows where. Um, you just want to get those voicemails all flowing to the same place uh, so that you, you got one place to check no matter where you're at. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with you. So that's a, that's a good perspective on, on where we were 
uh, where we are and where we're going right right now. Yeah. So yeah. Let, let's just talk just a little bit about what we are hearing as um, a, a provider and a vendor to to a lot of clients. I mean, Connor, I know a lot of people have called in, and we've taken a lot of people, uh, some of our clients, and they've they've started working remotely in in some cases. Um, you mentioned that they're using their cell phones a lot. That's one of the complaints that we've heard. Um, with that, there's this inability to forward calls, um, and then there's limited routing routines, right? So it creates a lot of hops. So yep. uh, what it comes right down okay. to is that that's a poor customer experience. Is that how you would see yeah, it? Yeah, it, it really just boils down to organizations are kind of in two camps right now. Um, either they have the technology that makes voice really flexible or they don't. And there's not a lot of in between. Um, and so the ones that don't, you know, are really experiencing the things that are, you know, highlighted there on the screen. Gotcha. Um, and, and those are the calls that we've been getting and companies that we've been trying to help transition, you know, from non-flexible to flexible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Richard, from your perspective, I mean, you deal with people all over the country and then also in, in Canada. Have you heard um, other kinds of experiences that, that organizations are having right now uh, that you'd like to add to that? Um, I think I'd, I'd echo um, what Connor just said is that you're either in one of two camps. You've either had the technology implemented already and the transition is seamless and, and quick and you or you don't. And, and you struggle and, and look for an immediate way to resolve the issues that arrived from this COVID um, incident. And, and we see that reflected throughout all of North America. Um, the folks that, that had the technology, we were able to transition them in, in a day or less, in a few hours, right? And, right? and the ones that didn't, we just had, it took a little bit longer. We could get them there, but it took a little longer because they didn't have the infrastructure capability to do it. So. Um, well, Richard, you, you know as well that some organizations have been using the same phone system for 15, 20 years. I mean, that, absolutely, technology's been around a long time and is very reliable. Um, and so, you know, it's like, okay, it's working, it's working, it's working. You know, if, the old adage, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Um, sure. But it it um, has that rigidity you know, to it that yeah. worked so well when, when this came along. You know, I, I was just thinking about it, Connor. I think it's funny, you and I know we've been using the word unified communications for a very long time, that, that acronym. I think we're finally at the point where there is true unified communication across all platforms, across all devices seamlessly. When it first came out, it wasn't really necessarily unified. It was more of a marketing <laughs> um, right. acronym than anything, and we've finally gotten there. So. Yeah, the, the technology, you know, is absolutely there um, and, you know, reasonably affordable, as, as we'll talk about. Absolutely. That's great. You know, I appreciate your input, you guys. Um, you know, as as we mentioned at the beginning, and we're going to talk about a couple of different solutions for for these challenges. Right. So let's start with AllWorks. And Richard, I'd love you to just introduce what AllWorks is initially to the audience. And then I have a, a couple of questions here on the screen that I'd like to try and get through and see if we can do some rapid fire question Q and A. Sure. So AllWorks is a, uh, a manufacturing company. We're headquartered in Rochester, New York, so upstate New York. And we've been in business since around 1996, 97. And we make a series of business communication platforms, voice over IP products, handsets, servers, and software. Um, we're actually one of the few companies left in the U.S. where we develop, design, and create all of our own product. So we don't put our software or put our label on other people's products. If you look at a lot of phones or handsets, you'll see some that look very similar. And that's because they're manufactured by the same companies and others just put their labels on them. We don't. We create everything from the ground up. In fact, about half of our entire staff are development engineers that are all located here in the U.S. We don't outsource to Bangladesh, Indonesia, Asia. We keep all of our resources and our development folks in-house, which allows us for a lot of flexibility in the way that we design and create product and respond to our customer needs. That's wonderful. Um, so, I mean, explain to just the concept of voiceover IP. Um, and how you know basically people can handle calls from anywhere 
Yeah, so I kind of mentioned like the the, the notion of unified communications or VoIP or uh, or our technology anywhere, anytime, anyway. Um, it basically gives a, an individual or a customer the ability to respond through a voice channel on any device. So right now we're utilizing, I'm utilizing a laptop to talk to you guys. I have a desk phone over to my right. I have my mobile phone. I have my tablet. I can basically answer and respond to any call on any device anywhere in the world. And that's due to software applications. That's due to SIP technology. That's due to a lot of different things that we bring together under one unified platform so that people can respond anywhere, anytime, and use one phone number. So. I can have somebody call my main phone number and get to me wherever I am, anywhere in North America, um, and I don't have to give them different phone numbers. They can just call me on one, which makes it very convenient. And I can respond to them in the same way. Richard, so, would you touch on, because it, it can be a little confusing for people, um, of I've got my personal cell phone number and then I have a business number. Um, sure. You know, and and just kind of how that works on one device. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So it's really in the software. Um, we make mobile applications that run on Apple and Android devices as well as tablets. Mm -hmm. And basically those software, those applications uh, mimic my desk phone on those devices. So anything I can do on my desk phone, I can do on my mobile device. And so when I place a call from that application on my smartphone, to Connor or to anybody else, it looks like it's coming from my office. The caller ID information that gets passed through is my business phone. It's not my cell phone, which I personally like and a lot of our customers do because my cell phone is my personal cell phone. I don't necessarily want to give my cell phone number out to everybody because um, on the weekends, I like to kind of keep my life private. <laughs> if everybody had my cell phone number, everybody would be calling my cell phone number. But I can still see a number that comes in on my business line. I can choose to answer that. And if I don't, it goes to my business voicemail, not my cell business or my cell voicemail. So it's a very clean way of separating my personal life from my business life through those applications. Thank you. And, and with that being said, just to tag onto that. So if you're calling from your cell phone, utilizing that app, Again, it doesn't show as your cell phone. You're you're using Correct. that that technology on your phone. Correct. I'm just utilizing it, but at the same time, when that call comes into that application, I get a little pop up on my screen. It tells me that it's an incoming call and that it's coming through that app. I click okay. to answer. I start talking, and then at that point, this is just like my desk phone. So I can mute the call. I can put it on hold. I can transfer it. I can park it. I can conference call. Whatever I could do on that, I can do on this. It acts the same way. So. All right. So, you know, we, we've talked about desk phones and then soft phones. So when does a desk phone versus a soft phone make sense? Um, you know, in, in this case that you've been talking about, the, those are two different things. Um, yep. You know, yep. what's the right customer for that? So it comes, starts to come down to personal preference, and uh, a soft phone is a is a phone that operates on your PC. So I'm talking to you right now through my Dell laptop, which has an all work soft phone on it. So I can use my mouse, and I can drive, and I can click on a contact and call that contact. I can talk through the the headset I'm, that I'm wearing right now. So it really starts to come down to personal preference. Um, I also have the desk phone over here. And to be honest, things like the speakerphone quality are much better on the desk phone than they tend to be on the speakers on my laptop. Now, I use a headset, which has nice speaker head, headset quality. I have a boom mic right here that I can talk to people on. Um, but both function and perform the same. It becomes, it kind of comes down to personal preference. We see it come, sometimes comes down to generational preferences. So, Kind of like Connor, I've been in this game a long time. I'm not going to give my age, but maybe my energy level isn't the same that it was 20 years ago. Um, but I, I grew up using a desk phone, 
and I like a desk phone, right? But I have 20 year old daughters. Okay, there I kind of probably gave my age away. I have 20 year old <laughs> daughters who are very tech savvy and they like using their, their devices and their PCs for making and receiving phone calls. So it can sometimes come down to personal preference. Yeah, and that, that the functionality is, is the same. That preference is strong too. Um, yeah. you know, we have an emotional connection to technology. And so yeah. if you're hiring younger workers and you sit them down in front of, you know, an old PC and a and an old handset, <laughs> you know, they, they feel like they're stepping back in time. Um, right. You know, we've all seen those videos on YouTube where the kid tries to figure out the, you know, uh, radio phone. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's getting to be that way in some cases, you know, with, with desk phones with certain generations. So I, I completely agree with what you're saying, Richard. Yeah. And, and just to add one last thing to that yeah. is that we're going to see that, I think, accentuated even more because we're going through a, a COVID situation right now where there will be an entire generation that won't know anything but a mobile or remote-based workforce going mm -hmm. forward. Yeah. It's almost like we have an entire generation that doesn't know what it was like to fly pre-9-11, right? <laughs> and so yeah. that, 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 that becomes part of our society. So to have that flexibility is very important. So, you know, talking about voice over IP, it, let's, you know, touch on the reliability of that. Um, how reliable when people want to have consistent um, calls is voice yeah. over IP? I, I think that's an excellent question. I get it all the time because when yeah. voice over IP first came out, we associated it with, oh, this is a great way to avoid long distance charges, which in voice VoIP setups, that is absolutely true. But there right. were a lot of hiccups with it early on, right? Because people were like, well, it runs over the internet and the internet's not reliable. Well, things have changed dramatically since VoIP's inception. And what I tell a lot of people is whether you um, think you're using VoIP or not, I can guarantee you that when you make a phone call, regardless of how you're making it, you're using VoIP. And the reason yeah. for that is even if you have a traditional carrier, what we call POTS or plain old telephone line coming into your business, that that line goes to your carrier, whether that's CenturyLink, Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, who, name any carrier in the US. As soon as that call hits their central office, it's going VoIP the rest of the way. Every major carrier in the United States, every local carrier in the United States uses that because of the less expensive a less expensive form of transport and it is very reliable today so gotcha. you're you're using it whether you think you're not or, or you are so <laughs> yeah right uh, so when does we get that question in montana a lot too but, um, yeah. you know because montana is a, a bit behind the curve and but um, across Montana, um, you know, VoIP is a very reliable, you know, type of solution. And there's lots of now pre-testing you can do uh, right down to your physical location, you know, to verify that. Um, and and you just uh, can do that over the internet now. So very easy, you know, to have uh, verification and again, highly reliable, uh, even good old Montana. Yeah, and I one last thing I, I kind of echo on that is I think what people find the pleasant surprise is, and you, and you can get into the the dollar aspects later, is once people start to realize the cost savings that they can um, they can obtain by moving to that transport mechanism, combined with the reliability, makes for a very strong case factor. So. So speaking to that that Montana piece that that Connor added in, I mean, what type of internet do you need to actually have VoIP? It's it's not as much as you think, <laughs> but uh, it really depends on the size and scope of the business. So okay. we use a we use a, a a a basis called concurrent concurrent calling. So really, what that means is how many simultaneous calls are you going to be making at any one time? How many users are you going to have on the system? We take a look at that holistically, especially with a company like yours. We work in conjunction. You guys know this um, very well, that it really sure. depends on what the call volume is as to how much internet you need. But the actual, how much internet does an actual call 
um, take, it's very little. It, it's a very little amount. So. And I would just say four or five years ago, you know, this was a question, you know, we really had to engineer. Now, the bandwidth, uh, you know, there, there's more bandwidth, you know, than, than people are utilizing. And because again, the the requirements for VoIP is so small, um, now it it's just a drop in the in the overall bucket. Um, so it, it's really not something, you know, with the exception of you know very rural, poor internet type places, um, you know, that you have to engineer anymore. Gotcha. All right, great. So the the one last question I'm going to to ask you, Richard, before we move on, um, and we can tackle some of these others at the end is uh, you know is there any way that this works with a traditional phone line as well or is there you know is it just strictly internet based no absolutely so we we built these systems from the ground up with the idea that so uh, the one thing i didn't add in our introduction was that we are strictly an smb level business so we we primarily support small to medium businesses and enterprises throughout all of north america so we have very big name customers I could show you, I could flash up, um, but it's typically remote offices or smaller offices. You're not gonna see us at the, at the corporate headquarters of Boeing or the corporate headquarters of, uh, of Nike, right? You're gonna see us at more small, base, small to medium level businesses. Um, and with that, we designed the systems to reflect that. So we can take a traditional telephone line, we can take a, tr a newer SIP line, which you guys can educate folks on, or voice over IP. We can run those in harmony with one another, actually. We can do it at the okay. same time or, or independently. So. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yep. All right, thank you so much, Richard. I really appreciate Absolutely. that. Um, I'm we will touch on the, the money conversation in a few slides. Um, sure. Before we do that, <clears throat> what I'd like to do is, is talk a little bit about Clearfly Communications as well. So Clearfly is a nationwide telecommunications company. Um, it's based out of Montana, which I don't think a lot of people knew. Um, and it, I'd like to ask you, Connor, would you mind explaining how Clearfly and the AllWorks Voice Over IP work together and then we can maybe tackle a couple of these questions as well. Sure. So, you know, real simply, when you do make a phone call, you know, and pick up your handset or your mobile phone and you dial the number and you hit send, um, ultimately somebody has to carry that phone call uh, from one place to another. Um, and so, um, you know, it, it, it might be a, a rural telephone company. Um, it might be uh, a, a big national mobile carrier like Verizon. Um, it might be a CenturyLink. Um, you know, all of these are, are carriers. Okay? Um, when things began, began to go virtual, um, you could get other companies involved um, and uh, have them transport calls um, across the entire country. Okay. So Clearfly is one of those companies that are uh, based out of Billings, as you mentioned. They've been a, a long time, wonderful partner uh, of First Call. Um, and we've used them over and over again um, in, in terms of implementing AllWorks and other types of solutions. Um, and so one of the nice things is you can transfer um, you know, your existing phone numbers to them. Um, and if you've got locations um, or people working out of different parts of the country, um, we can connect them, you know, straight into Clearfly as well, uh, using technology uh, from AllWorks and, and uh, uh, other solutions. Okay. Okay. So, um, you know, nationwide carrier, uh, been around 10 plus years, um, and, uh, you know, again, we'll handle all of that transport. Okay. So let's talk about how First Call um, kind of helps implement these tools, right? So we've talked about voice over IP and, and um, how Clearfly works with it. What do we do as an organization? Um, obviously, uh, do we install, Connor? All right. So, um, you know, if, if you're interested in solutions like this, typically you need to seek out a partner like First Call. And there's, um, you know, First Call is not the only partner in the state of Montana. There's lots of other, you know, good companies out there. Uh, but ultimately, um, if you, you've got the carrier, you've got your existing phone lines, you've got billing, you've got contracts, um, you've got what kind of technology makes sense, 
who's going to install it, who's going to train our people. That's where a partner like First Call uh, comes in to play. Um, so in Allworks's case, uh, we have certified Allworks engineers that have been trained by their engineers. Um, and, um, you know, they handle all of the coordination, all of the project management, just to make it easy for the client um, so that they know what's the technology, who's doing what when, um, and the install goes well and the technical goes well. And then, you know, the, the training, you know, aspect, you know, is important too. Okay. So we can install, train, maintain, support, all of those things. Um, yep. Will we help coordinate with the changes that they need to make with their other carriers? Yes. Yeah, okay. it's it's really uh, turnkey. Um, so once we're hired to do a system, you know, we take control of all of the vendors, all of that coordination uh, and, and that management. Okay. All right. Great. So let's let's move on at this point and and talk a little bit about what these things cost. So you know, obviously everyone on this call wants to know how much does a voice over IP phone system run you. So mm -hmm. I know that you you came up with a formula for um, thirty users. So would you like to talk through that just a little bit? Yeah. Um, you know, this has gotten simpler too over time. Um, you know, as uh, you know, Richard can can remember when when unified communication you know was new, there was lots of different pieces and parts, and um, you know it's like oh you know people would ask you how much does this cost, and you'd say well I got to come do a big site discovery at your location. Much much simpler uh, now. Um, so again, let let's just use um, a model of 30 handsets, and first let's look at renting. Um, so renting is, you know, I'm not going to buy it. I'm going to pay a monthly fee per handset um, and I want one bill. Um, so I want the fee for the phone system and the maintenance and support and the carrier all bundled together um, and one deal. And there's lots of solutions that are out there from different providers and manufacturers that kind of follow this model. In general, uh, those solutions are going to cost you about $25 per user or per handset uh, per month. And so if you take that $25 times 30 handsets and you um, extend it out over 60 months, um, which is oftentimes the contracts that are associated with those, um, you get to a total fee of $45,000. So you're not paying $45,000 all at once. You're just paying that on a monthly fee over the course of 60 months. Gotcha. All right. Okay. So what's the difference between uh, then purchasing? So I, I, obviously I see there's a big difference. Yeah. So when you purchase a system, um, you've got, again, same thing, 30 handsets, and you're going to now own the technology. Um, so purchase price, with maintenance uh, included uh, around $22,500. Um, you're gonna have to pay for your carrier bill separately and um, using the same number of, of projected lines, um, you know, that would be about $152 a month. So for 30 handsets, that's probably about eight lines or so. Um, again, we wanna factor this over 60 months and we wanna make sure we do that with the carrier fees. So when you add up the purchase price plus the carrier fees over that period of time, um, you're at about oh, $31,000, $32,000 um, over the course of that five-year period. Same technology, um, just a different way of purchasing. Right, right. So um, what, what you're saying as well, as far as I'm hearing, is that it's just a matter of how you wanna pay um in, in terms of what the benefit is there but is there a, a bigger benefit to renting since there is such a, a significant difference yeah you know that the general conclusions you know that you have is um if you can purchase or lease to purchase you know that's a, a less expensive way to go um and the thing i want to remind and, and richard will echo this is that uh like we said earlier a lot of companies have been running the same phone system for 15 years um, we have all works customers, you know, that have been on the same system, you know, for well over a decade. Um, and so you do get a longer lifespan than just 60 months. Um, with a rental fee, you're going to keep paying 
um, you know, and paying and paying and paying. So when you hit month 61 or month 86, that fee is still there. Whereas in the purchase model, you know, you're pretty much only paying that $152 a month. Okay. okay. So do try and purchase or lease to purchase, you know, whenever possible. That said, not all businesses, you know, are built for, you know, seven, 10 years, you know, of, of that. And they're going to flex and they're going to change and they need to put cash in other types of things versus a phone system. Right. And in those cases, you know, renting, no money down, um, you know, one bill every month. And if you want to add a user, you add it. And if you don't need that user anymore, you take them away. So if you've got seasonality to your business, um, you know, and, and those types of things, renting might make great sense. Gotcha. That's great. So so we've kind of reviewed all of the, the all works options there. And we have a, a basic understanding of what that costs. Um, I, I do want to jump to our our next slide around Teams Business uh, 365 Voice. Let's see. Sure. So Microsoft 365 Business Voice, which is a newer technology that's that's evolving. Um, I, I want to understand a little bit more about that. I know that we use Teams uh, at first call, but you know what is Microsoft 365 Business Voice? Sure. So uh, probably most people on the call are familiar with Skype. Um, you know, Skype was around uh, for a long, long time. Um, it was an early technology uh, that a lot of people embrace globally um, for chat and voice and video calls. And um, several years ago, Microsoft bought Skype and they developed a enterprise version of Skype called Skype for Business. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like what often happens when a company buys somebody else's technology is they have a completely other different strategy in mind. Um, and that's exactly what happened here. So Microsoft said, look, we want Skype's technology, um, but we're going somewhere else with it, but it's going to take us four or five years to get there. Um, and so ultimately they have phased out Skype for business and they have replaced it with what they call Microsoft 365 Business Voice. Really similar concept to what we talked about before. Um, you can run your voice communications. You can have a, um, a handset on your desk. Uh, mm -hmm. You can have an app on your phone. You can have an app on your PC or your Mac. Um, you know, very similar type of, of concept. Um, and your existing phone number, you can transfer over when people call, you know, the phone will ring, you can transfer calls, you know, do all of those types of things. Okay. The, the keys are, um, are you already on, you know, what was called Office 365 or Microsoft 365? Um, so many organizations have embraced that technology for their email, or that's where they access their applications like Word, Excel, or PowerPoint. And if you are using Office 365, you can actually add Microsoft 365 Business Voice um, as a service. You pay an additional fee to get it. Gotcha. So can we talk about the limitations um, between this solution versus AllWorks? Right. Um, and then also, you know, let's just address the reliability of the tool itself. Yeah, so in terms of the back end, uh, both solutions are using the same technology. Uh, they're using SIP based carriers to transport you know, phone calls, okay? So no difference from that standpoint. And you can use Microsoft as your voice carrier, or you can use a partner like Clearfly as your carrier. Um, so you, you really have options from that standpoint, but they're using the same fundamental you know, technology there. Okay. Awesome. Both um, are largely software based. Okay. So one of the big differences with Microsoft, they don't make their own handsets. It's a bunch of third party stuff. So you can get um, handsets from Yealink or Logisys. You know, there's lots of different manufacturers that are out there. Microsoft doesn't have anything to do that. They basically say, look, this is our software. You know, what kind of handset do you want to run it on? One of the drawbacks with that approach is there is some integration between 
the handset and the software. And so Allworks can bring some more um, advanced type of features or really traditional phone system types of features that we're used to um, you know, on phone systems because they do own their own handset and they can make that software and hardware really tight in the way that they work together. Yeah. One of the things that uh, business voice brings to the table that Allworks doesn't um, is um, is it integrates right into if you are using like Microsoft Teams, um, you know, for not only phone calls internally, uh, but also uh, video calls uh, and that type of technology and chat. All of that, you know, gets brought to the table with a solution like Teams that doesn't exist within 365. Gotcha. What we do is just really try and help organizations figure out what do you need from voice communications um, and what makes best sense. And in some cases, we've got clients that use Office 365, Microsoft 365, and Teams, but also mm -hmm. use Allworks uh, because of their needs. Um, so it really can be a mix uh, of things or you can completely embrace one technology or the other. Sure. And I'm sure that some industries are going to have different demands than others. So mm -hmm. um, yep. it's really just got to be specific to them. Um, so from that perspective, Connor, let's talk a little bit about the money for uh, 365. Yeah, so those of us that are familiar you know, with Microsoft 365 or what was called Office 365, um, we know that we're paying basically for software licensing. Um, and so, you know, we have our mailbox and we might also, and so we're paying a fee for that. And then we have Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, those common office applications, and we're paying a fee for that. And then there's additional services that you can add on. Um, some are security-based, some are software-based, you know, lots of things associated with it. And so when you think about uh, Microsoft Business Voice, um, just think about it as another add-on to your existing 365 licensing, okay? okay. So you, again, we're gonna use the same example here of, of 30 users. And you do have to have either Office 365 E1 or E3. Mm -hmm. There's also another package called E5 that bundles everything together. But let's just stick with, you've gotta have E1 or E3. And mm -hmm. if you want to add the phone system license, that's $8 per month per user. And if you add Microsoft's carrier services, that's $12 per month per user. So for 30 users, just for phone and carrier services, that'd be about $600 a month gotcha. on top of what you pay for 365 E1 or E3. Um, then you have a decision to make um, about handsets or headsets. Um, so in uh, the, the Microsoft world, you could say, I don't want any handsets. I just want everybody to work off of their PC or Mac um, and their mobile phone, um, and I'm not going to buy handsets. Um, if you do that, I highly recommend, just like Richard's got on, just like I have on, that you do embrace a headset. Um, headsets give you privacy in your phone conversations, very important, and they also improve the quality of the outgoing and incoming voice because of the microphone and the speakers that are built into headsets. So, you know, we're typically telling our clients, look, you need to budget, say, $250 a month, either for a handset or a headset. Um, and in some cases, if you want both, you know, you can double that, but let's just stay with 250. Um, so 30 handsets or headsets, 250 bucks a piece, that's about $7,500 that you need to buy um, and own those. Labor is typically gonna be about $5,000, um, you know, to configure this, install it, migrate your existing phone numbers, get everything set up, um, you know, your people trained and all that jazz. So for a total five-year cost, it's about $48,000 um, just for the uh, licensing, um, hardware, and, and labor. Awesome. All right. So we got a couple of different solutions for, for, for different types of businesses. I, I think that's great to have things to compare 
to one another. Um, I'm going too fast here. Uh, so, you know, based on, on our conversation today, it, it just a bit of a recap here. I mean, COVID hits, there's tons of irrational fear. There's tons of rational fear. Um, we're trying to handle, get a handle on what this looks like going forward, but we can, we can safely conclude that there is going to be more remote working and more digital working involved. I mean, it, it was trending in that direction anyways. So getting a great um, idea about who and how you're communicating um, is going to be the thing that you need to, to do to be able to figure out um, what solution works best for you. Um, yeah. Do you really need desk phones? Um, are mobile phones the way to go? What, what is your call flow? So again, it's just identifying those for your um, business. Uh, and that's what I'm hearing that, that we can do both from an all works perspective, as well as the, the Office 365 voice. Um, would either of you like to add anything in, in addition to that? If I may, um, yes. I think I think kind of what's important too is I'll kind of go back to where I was mentioning earlier about how this is a like a 9-11 moment where it changes our thought process of how we do things and how we act and do business going forward. And, um, you know, for somebody like me, I've been working remote for over 14 years. Um, working remote is not uh, anything new to me. But for a very long time, people, um, businesses were challenged with that concept of how do I how do I stay in touch with my employees? How do I keep them motivated? How do I make sure they're doing their work? Because they're working at home and doesn't that mean they're going to, you know, take longer breaks or work in their pajamas or, or whatever that case may be, right? And what's, what's interesting is I've found, and from the research that we've done when we talk to companies who move to this model, they actually find that productivity levels go up. Now, it depends on where you live, right? Again, I'm talking nationally. Um, but when people don't have to have a commute, they start to work a little earlier because they're not in their car driving. Or maybe they work a little later because they're not in their car driving home at night. And they get comfortable with it. And all of a sudden, they're responding to emails at 8 or 9 o'clock at night because they just happen to see it and think, well, I might as well respond to it now. So things like productivity levels actually tick up. And then in conjunction with that, they find that um, the happiness level or whatever of people tends to pick up a little bit as well um, yeah. because it does give them a little more flexibility. And we're definitely seeing that along a generational line also, like Connor and I mentioned earlier, is that it gives companies a much broader base for them to attract talent. So now, because you can have people work, work remotely, you don't need to just look in Helena, Billings, Great Falls, wherever. Now you could maybe track, attract talent from even different states because you have the ability to have them work remotely. So it, it broadens the ability for the company to find more talent and even help them grow as an organization. So kind of went off on a little speech there, but I think no, it's important. No, that's okay. So. I, I, lo I love it. I, th I think that you're you're right on there, Richard. Um, Connor, anything else you'd like to add before I kind of recap? To me, it's the, the workforce is super diverse. Um, and so flexibility is just key. Um, you know, we work with a high, highway contractor. Um, and so those, those folks have people in the office, they have project managers, um, they have lots of people in the field, um, their businesses um, flex, you know, throughout the course of the year because of the seasonal nature of the work. And bottom line is people have to be connected um, and they have to be able to communicate. And that can't be a hoppy pain in the butt, you know, um, where are my contacts? How do I get a hold of these people? Uh, you know, it, it needs to be a streamlined, easy to use uh, solution. Um, and you know, if a highway contractor, you know, which most of us don't think, hey, you know, these are the most technologically sophisticated industry on the planet, um, is embracing these types of technologies because they need to flex. Um, um, it, it is no different for any other organization in 2020. We have diverse 
um, workforce in terms of what technologies they're used to. Um, mm -hmm. Test phones, mobile phones. We have to be able to work in the office, out in the field, uh, from home. You know, lots of different places. So just flexibility is is what organizations really need to embrace. And if you can also keep the costs, you know, in check um, and make the stuff reasonably affordable for folks, um, you know, it's a win for the employer, it's a win for the employee, and it's a win for the customer, and it's a win for the pocketbook. Yeah, I think one one last thing. Sorry, I want to echo one more mm -hmm. thing because I think that was really, really important what Connor said. Um, because when this technology was first rolling out, it really was only the large corporations that could afford it because you needed so many other things in order to operate a remote workforce or have call centers in different parts of the country or whatever. And now, thanks to the development of software and other things, this has become truly the little guy can get what the big guy has and not pay what the big guy is paying and, and make themselves really look like a bigger organization and have a lot of flexibility, so. Gotcha. All right, and you know, at, at the end of the day, both the AllWorks Voice over IP solution and Microsoft 365 Voice can achieve those things that we just talked yep. about. Yep. Um, okay. So we, we've, we've covered a lot today. Um, we, we're gonna get to questions in just a moment. Uh, obviously we know that like, voice flexibility is key, that technology exists. There's different ways to purchase these things. Um, having a vision, making a plan is going to help you to make the right decisions in terms of your investments. Um, and then COVID is a driver, but there are many other drivers moving organizations um, to this type of technology. And again, um, just to echo uh, what I had said earlier is that it, it, we were going in this direction anyways. Um, so we want people want to be able to have that flexibility to work mobily. Um, video conferencing is important. There's cost of travel that's, that can be reduced. So there, there's a lot of different things that uh, both these solutions can really help an organization achieve. So with that being said, I'd love to um, open this up to see if there's any questions out there. I know Katie has a couple that she was sitting on um, through the conversation. Uh, Katie, would you mind jumping in and um, addressing those? Yes, most definitely. Um, we, it looks like we do have a superintendent on the call. Connor, would you mind speaking um, more directly to what they should be thinking about in terms of voice communications a little bit? Yeah, um, boy, thanks to the schools. Talk about flexibility um, <laughs> these last couple yeah. months. Um, and a lot of unknowns out there, you know, in terms of how they're going to flex going forward. Um, and schools are running the same thing. You know, they're having to rely heavily on personal cell phones um, and those types of things, you know, to, to stay in communication. Um, ultimately, you know, during normal times, schools need to be thinking about E911, um, you know, during an emergency, um, you know, and making sure that they're getting the right info. Um, to dispatchers, um, you know, if someone calls 911 inside a school building, you know, that superintendent, uh, the administrators, you know, they want to get notified immediately um, of where is that call coming from, you know, which room, and get alerts to it. And a solution like AllWorks can help them do that. Um, also, you know, schools are, are dealing, unfortunately, a lot now with security system and access controls so that they can lock down the doors on a building. Um, you know, with the AllWork system, you can connect those types of controls right into the phone system. And so all a user has to do is push a button on the phone um, and, you know, they can lock down that building. Um, you know, teachers, um, administrators, they also need flexibility. You know, they have contacts, they have email, they want all that stuff in, in one place too. Um, and then staff directory, you know, uh, both small districts and larger districts, you know, they need it easy, um, you know, to find out um, who's who, um, what their extension is and all that kind of stuff um, and making that easy. And then as, as administrators, they're up and out of their seats. They're not strapped to a desk, you know, like they used to be, you know, go to the principal's office. Uh, they, they've got to be mobile, moving around the building. Um, and so having the technology right there on their smartphone, you know, no matter where they are, uh, makes their life uh, much, much easier. 
Last point I would probably make is that, you know, remember teachers got to teach. They don't want to be learning complicated technology. Um, and so, you know, AllWorks does a really nice job of keeping it very, very simple uh, for the teachers um, so that they can focus on, on the classroom. Gotcha, thank you. I think that was pretty thorough. Um, another question that came in, uh, I believe it was on a slide, but it wasn't touched on, was pertaining to specific industries that First Call has experience with um, implementing voice communications. Can you speak a little bit more to that as well? Can you say that one more time? Yeah, sorry. Um, speaking to specific industries that First Call has experience with um, implementing either AllWorks or other voice communication solutions. Yeah, you bet. So in terms of um, first call, you know, one of the, the neat things about Montana is there's not enough of any one thing. Right? And so we work with lots and lots of different industries across the state. It, it's also been kind of neat during this time of COVID. Um, you know, we, we've played a, a, a big role as critical infrastructure workers uh, because we deal with banks, we deal with utilities, we deal with credit unions, we deal with school districts, we deal with food banks. Um, and so, you know, we've uh, been able to keep phone systems, uh, IT, all that stuff rolling and working and secure, you know, for these organizations and help them flex, you know, throughout it. So, you know, there, there's really not a lot of industries that, that first call in its 20 plus years um, um, hasn't dealt with or, or touched. And if there are, it's probably because they don't exist in Montana, like zoos maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then Richard, if you want to touch on that a little bit as well with your experience and and the vast markets that you work with, also. Yeah, I mean, there's there's not a single industry that we don't touch or have worked with. Um, school districts are a big big part of our business. We do a lot of school districts throughout all of the uh, the U.S. from from small, you know, maybe. 10 phone independent private school up to we have a large uh, district in southern california that has 3,000 handsets so i mean we run the gamut between all of those and pretty much every vertical market in as regards to finance and retail and um insurance deal auto dealerships i mean you, you name it we we touch every vertical market or every business um on a quick little fun side note, we even do private residences, which is not normal, but we do the private residence of David Copperfield, the magician down in Las Vegas. And, um, yeah, well, there, yeah, so 30, if anybody from, let's see, what would it be? Uh, uh, what's, what's Big Sky? <laughs> yeah. what, what's, what's the big resort up there? It's just called Big Sky. Big Sky, well, yeah. Yeah, there's the private one. Oh, the, uh, pri the Yellowstone Club? Yeah, Justin Timberlake, oh, if you're on the line yeah. and you need a phone yeah. system, you know, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, we we do have um, um, Bruno Mars is the other one. So there yes, we go. We can we, we can throw a couple of big names oh, around. Us anyway. up, Bruno. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We're showing off now. All right. Any other questions there, Katie? No, I'll leave the the additional ones for you to reach out personally, and I'll let you guys wrap up here. Okay, that sounds great. Hey, I just want to thank uh, you, Richard and, and Connor, for uh, helping me out with it, with this particular webinar. Um, it's been it's been a pleasure spending some time with both of you, learning more about the voice communication options that are available in Montana for Montana businesses, um, and what we can do from from the first call perspective. Um, Really appreciate our partnership with AllWorks. Uh, Richard, thank you for taking the time. Um, My pleasure. I, I will say that if anyone has any interest in finding out a little bit more, uh, getting some quotes, Connor is a, a great resource. Uh, his, his contact information is on this last slide here. Um, we also have another person, um, Justin Pritchard, uh, who, can, who can answer questions as well got some resources here. Everyone will be receiving a copy of this recording, so you'll be able to access this information. Um, and then I, I just encourage everybody to, to please uh, fill out the survey at the end of the webinar so that we know how we're doing and how we can do better. And uh, thank you all very much. I hope everybody has a great day. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Meg. Thanks, Richard. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Thank Take you. care.
Bye.